And we have some, hopefully you'll have good representation today, Tal. We advertised. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> it's April 10th, 2024. This is an FEO SIG2 meeting. Um, so I hope you see my shared screen. Uh, not a lot of items of agenda on the agenda, but big ones. I, I was hoping for today to, to really finalize the teams and uh, end the discussions and begin work <laughs> uh, properly. I mean, people are working, obviously. We, we have a lot of issues in PRs, but uh, working towards the priorities that uh, SIG1 has handed us. So um, with that in mind, I think uh, Wim isn't here, right? I think he, he posted that he probably won't be able to make it. OK. Um, so let's go back to what we had before and uh, just copy paste this for now. <clears throat> so I'll, I'll mention nobody has stepped up <laughs> personally or otherwise to me in terms of, uh, of being a lead here. And I let's give it one more try right now and see if anybody for any of these topics uh i i don't yeah. mind volunteering for the platform help liam here that is wonderful okay um and i i as i told everybody i i'm preferring not to be a tech lead on these just because it's important for me to distribute uh, uh the leadership roles um, but I will absolutely be involved uh, heavily in platform. I'm, I'm seeing that maybe I'll explain why a little bit. Uh, there's some responsibility that Google has in terms of providing the initial platform <laughs> and now making sure that it transitions well into R3 and beyond, even that if that goes beyond ports into other things. So as a, as a Googler here, it's very important uh, to, to make sure that the platform is maintained. So I'm going to be putting a lot of my personal focus into uh, this team and hopefully into as many others as I can muster. Um, OK, that's terrific. Um, so any other uh, oh, yeah, for, for, for testing and CT, uh, are we going to do all these things together or just because I guess I can provide some help on, on testing, but not sure about CT. <laughs> Yeah, oh. definitely, Victor. Uh, can, I, can I take that question now, uh, Tom? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, definitely, Victor. Uh, so so uh, I, the way I look at it is obviously Rado will lead our CD. Uh, we need uh, multiple, at least lead and the sub lead. Uh, uh, you leading the testing would be really, really great if you would. Uh, yeah, uh, sure. For that, yeah. Victor Rado, yeah. Uh, so we can put Victor plus Rado, but uh, here's a question. Do we really want to have it uh, more than one person? Yes, I, I we, we discussed two, right? Uh, Tal, we want it as lead and sub -lead. So for example, if somebody is on a vacation, somebody well, wants to do the meeting, yeah. Yeah, we I, definitely I, discussed I, that I, in the last meeting. OK, OK. Um, yeah, I just hope we'll. Sure, but but let's point out it's not a rule. We don't absolutely need it. I, I have a feeling it might be a struggle to find leads. So, <laughs> okay, okay, that that's fine. Now, if if there is volunteers, then let's make it tough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the idea is the teams can function without a lead. The lead is kind of as we try to explain, and we can go back to this. What what are the what are our expectations from leads, right? So. Um, we kind of emphasize not necessarily a tech lead, engineering lead, definitely not necessarily doing all the work, right? The idea is more of a point of contact for the rest of uh, Nephew, uh, right? Just because there's going to be so much work and it's going to be impossible to track it all in one meeting. Um, okay. So let, let's march down the list and see and talk each one of these issues separately. So for ORAN, I've personally not been uh, very involved, uh, but I wonder from the people who have been involved, can somebody, I, I feel like it's a little bit daunting. There's a lot of uh, uh, 
stress put on around for R3. And maybe people are a little bit timid about uh, taking the leadership role. But again, I'll, I'll remind you the, the responsibilities. You really just have to keep track of things. There's not an expectation that you have to deliver something uh, <laughs> with certain standards, right? That's something that just all of us as a community maintain for each other. But you're not responsible for delivering around success, <laughs> right? That's not one of the, uh, the lists here. So I, I hope that reduces some anxiety regarding this. Uh, Vish, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, if it's more like a project lead, you know, and also somebody interfacing to get things done, well, uh, I know yeah. there are other stalwarts here out here who can pick it up. But if it's more about status and actually earning the cash, like you said last time, you know, we like discussed. Yeah, uh, I, it is that though. I, I think that the the best person for those roles is not just uh, it's not just a warm body, <laughs> it's not just a human being who manages it, but somebody who really understands the issues deeply and has an idea about can explain them to internally within the team and outside the team and have a good grasp about how progress is going, right? So it, it, it's definitely a, a, a knowledge role. <laughs> so- Yeah, I think definitely that's what we discussed in the last meeting too, you know, like somebody who understands the scope, understands the subject matter, need not know the nitty gritty of uh, underlying code or functionalities to that level, but definitely understand the scope, understand the lay of the land. Exactly, yeah. that's a good way to put it, yeah. Uh, Alexi? Yeah, happy to be your guy. Amazing. And, until I find someone else. <laughs> but but if you need a name for now, I'm happy to be the 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 resource. But can you just tell me a bit more what it entails? So it's providing status update probably in this call. Well, I you know we'll see how this call works for I, what we did in R two. We kind of had separate meetings, and actually during the R two development cycle this meeting wasn't very useful. And sometimes we even just canceled it to uh, provide more time for people to work in on the other meetings. But let, let's discuss that maybe as a separate item. Okay, yeah, I just wanna understand the expect, I'm, I'm happy to chime in here and, and help, but I, yeah. I, I wanna understand the expectations, right? So, so I, I know uh, you, you've written some of them. Yeah, so, so you know, my it's a, it's a good question. I think we, we need to like, understand it more, but I, I guess we have a very light touch here. So the idea is that every team can organize however they see fit. But the point I think is not, is, is probably more important, less to update us and more to make sure that people within the team are communicating, that PRs are being commented on and merged and uh, that, that progress is being made, right? We, we, there's no expectations in terms of the pace of progress, but you know if somebody is blocked, you know, and sometimes the challenge is that people don't always tell you that they're blocked. They're just sitting on an issue and waiting for something else to happen. So we, we just don't want those things to go un, uh, unexamined and, and we, we want them handled, <laughs> right? So that we're constantly moving forward. So I, I understand that as being the, the role of the team lead just making sure that people have what they need to work. And if they're confused about something or waiting for something that you can help them connect connect the dots. Project Sounds good, basically. thanks. Yeah, put my name for Oran now, I'm happy to help. Thank you, um, Tal. Good, and, and just an honest question because you, know, you are uh, the SIG1 chair and there's tremendous work there. Um, um, I assume you're okay with that. <laughs> you're not quitting your your role as a Sig One chair. No, no, no. I'm not quitting my role at Sig One. Yeah. It's just um, Oran is dear to my heart. But yeah, I mean, okay. I'm speaking on behalf of Red Hat. I think Red Hat is willing to lead this, <laughs> whether it's me or some other Red Hatters. Eventually, I think we're committed to lead this. So, right now, put my name. It's good. Terrific. And uh, as you know, Google and uh, Red Hat uh, are going together on this as well. We, we don't have quite as much as resources as you have right now on this, but excellent. Thank you very much, Lexi. So, John, one, one item on Oran is part of the work is done on the OSC side. Uh, 
also. So if you look at the all the all the FICOM work is being done on the OSC side, even though we are maintaining that uh, the Jira items in our not the, the GitHub issues on our side. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, Alexi, whether the co-lead should be someone who is working on that that part of this stuff. Yeah, okay, so uh, I can give more detail. OSC is definitely going to be Seshu, and OAI is definitely going to be Sagar. Yeah. If you want to know all the various interactions, but I'm happy to be the overarching point of contact right, if, right. Uh, if this is what we're trying to get to here. Yes, yes, I'm talking about the sub-lead. We are talking, we're identifying two names, Alexi, that's right. I I know you're leading it. I was, I was, I was my comment is more towards the sub-lead. If... Yeah, I, need, I want to talk to Tim. Um, so, so yeah. Well, Let's leave it at this for now. Uh, I, I I want to talk to Tim uh, that is leading the work to the Oran stuff in Sigma One. Is is Tim uh, does Tim participate in OSC as well, specifically? No. You know? No. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this this is important. Is it's, it's such a high visibility aspect of the R three release. So. Or sorry, not that I'm aware of. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right, it, it's not too important. Yeah, just curious. Um, okay, so ORAN, a very high ticket item. There we go. Uh, service assurance. And I'll remind you know everybody, this includes observability. Uh, and um, although observability is one of those horizontal items, it will be involved in other things as well, but that's very central to service assurance. Subash? Uh, yeah, Tom. Uh, so, do you think uh, I, I could take, uh, participate here uh, to uh, to lead this part also? Uh, because already I'm involved in the work group five. So, I this is entirely up to your time and resources yeah. and 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 ability to put attention into it. I I think you would be do an amazing job, Subash. You, you've done incredible work in just spearheading the service assurance use case and defining it. Um, and it's up to you if you want to be involved also in the everyday work of uh, engineering and, and developing it. Again, you don't have to do that work specifically. Mm -hmm. It's more about coordinating it. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe uh, I'll volunteer for it. Uh, I think uh, I'll try uh, because already I'm tracking the uh, service assurance in Sigma. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. And let me say more, you know, uh, we're not throwing you into the water here and being, okay, you're the tech lead and we're forgetting about you and come back when you're done. <laughs> uh, we're yes, still yeah. very much a community and I hope so, and that will help each other. So, you know, if everybody feels overwhelmed or confused or feels the work in the team is not going clearly or, or well or efficiently, then, you know, can definitely bring it up for the rest of the community. And we can even swap leads during the process, right? If if somebody feels like they just can't do do this properly, or if something else comes up, so um, sure. this is more to kickstart us, right? And make sure that at least in the beginning we have uh, we have somebody looking into it, right? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so mm -hmm. much, Subash. Um, Thanks, Subash. Any sub leads for SA? <laughs> All right, I, so I'm, I'm super happy because we, we really want R3 to be very focused on very use case driven. Um, we're definitely growing up uh, Nafio in, in those terms. And um, yeah, I, have, I, I feel like the two big use cases we've, we've approved are, are incredibly important for the industry. So terrific. Um, so network function onboarding, uh, Remind everybody, this is basically the Nephew SDK. I kind of renamed it to onboarding because it includes uh, related issues, you know, Helm support, which is part of the SDK, but you know, it's also uh, not necessarily. <laughs> um, anybody want to step up here? I'll. I, I don't want to name names. I feel like that would be putting people on the spot, but uh, <laughs> um, Go ahead, Mickey. 
Wait, Mickey, please. Mickey yeah, has yeah. Get out. Um, you can put my name, but just keep in mind that, that I'm new to nephew. So it would, I probably would need some support. Absolutely. Um, first of all, thank you so much for, uh, you know, taking this chance uh, early on in your uh, joining. So, you know, one of the challenges you have is that I, I don't know how much work we're going to do on this, actually, because it's still very early in the process. You know, Stephen is leading kind of the design uh, group on it. And I don't actually know what we have planned for and what we're able to do and in, in for R3, right, for this current sprint cycle. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, sure. We could do a call. I definitely figure that all out. Yeah, I think possibly the next nephew SDK call, I would suggest being moving to a practical mode and trying to define some sort of POC or something else that we can showcase for SIG3. We'd really love to show progress. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for R2, we had the, um, uh, the, the translator, right? The, the helm to uh, operator translator. Um, we could possibly do something with that, maybe move it a little bit forward towards connecting it to the use cases. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what we're capable of doing, how many people would be involved. So, so that is your job, really, to figure out what can we do for R3. And yeah, kickstart that. <laughs> so okay. does that sound like something you can do? It sounds like you can. OK, yeah. I'll give it a try. And then uh, we could do a call and discuss more. Excellent. Thank you so much. So with platform, Liam has already stepped up, which is wonderful. And I don't know, I could put myself as like a co-lead. Uh, co How's that? Because um, I know uh, Bala really likes. Bala, yeah, are you? Definitely, definitely I mean, the two people is always good. Uh, for EDF onboarding before, uh, I think, thanks. For, uh, I, I'll consider you as a co-lead for, <laughs> for platform. <laughs> Uh, before okay. we go to the next one, NF onboarding, any uh, uh, sub-leads? Uh, oh, sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. Stephen, you want to piggyback? Or do you want to help Mickey with, as a sub-lead there? I'm sorry, I'm putting you on spot. Yeah, sure, no problem. Yeah. Okay, so I'll reach out to you. Yeah. NF onboarding, let's put Stephen's name uh, also. Sorry, I was distracted. Stephen, yeah. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, Stephen. Um, so documentation. Um, Sagar wanted to, I think I saw a message from him. He wanted to leave that. So Sagar, what, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, if all of you think that I didn't do a really bad job in R2 with two exercises, you know, and I think people didn't complain that much. I com I corrected them quickly, you know, before they complained. So if everyone thinks that I can do it again, you know. Yeah, I think I think one of the interesting challenges about documentation is we have a lot of PRs um, that come in, and it's I think there's quite a backlog on reviews. I've tried some of to review some of them, but I um, um yeah, documentation is a unique challenge, I think, because it's it's different from the coding PR. <laughs> uh, but uh, Sagar, thank you. Yeah, I think you you would be a wonderful person to uh, to kind of manage that team. Um, all right. So for security, uh, so these are so, I think we uh, call uh, the horizontal so, team, right? Documentation. Can yeah. Yeah. Can sorry, you? I just saw the connection a little bit. For documentation, uh, Sagar, uh, can we also put Gurgli's name? Uh, because he's leading our side on the website side, right? Sagar will do the... Um, so Gurgli isn't here. Uh, we, we can talk to him on Slack and see if he's interested. But uh, yes, we, we can't decide without we don't know his availability moving forward as well, right? If, I hope he'll be able to participate. He was such critical help to us, uh, you know, in setting up the documentation. We'll see how much time he has to continue working. Okay. All right. Um, 
All right, I'm, I'm happy to say we have just one more left uh, to, to the security horizontal. Um, Eta, I'll be happy to I'll, I'll be happy to lead this uh, uh, as a six, uh, six security chair. Uh, one one question I have in the context is uh, the RX scope working group versus this. Uh, how, what is the difference in the uh, discussions hap that will happen in this uh, uh, this group versus the RX scope working group? So. Good question, right? We, we're obviously collaborating a lot, but the, the point here and our general point to stick to is execution, right? Mm -hmm. this, this, is the, this is the area where we actually write the code, right. run the tests, uh, do the git commits, yeah. tag version, yeah. right? So this is where we get really dirty. So yes, we, we talk a lot about design. There's obviously a lot of back and forth. Um, there's definitely bleeding, uh, you know, on, on both ends here, but this is where, um, you know, the ideas and plans in SIG security become actual uh, implementations. Got it. Uh, the, the, the only reason why I ask is because there are two types of work, work items uh, when I looked at the board uh, for, uh, for, for from the security point of view. And some of those were pretty straightforward. Uh, some of those are already executed is what I believe. Uh, but then there are certain work items which might require certain discussions, right? Like, and those discussions will be taken up in the RX scope working group and not, not, not here. Yeah, right? like, that makes a lot of sense. I think six security is kind yeah. of special in that regard, right? It's, um, we're still figuring out and, and you're a part of figuring out how it really fits in everything, right? So yeah. From a practical perspective, it's a huge advantage because you already have a team meeting set up. <laughs> you can mm -hmm. say that. Yeah. So, um, so you can absolutely use that meeting. You know, as team lead here, it's up to you to organize that. So, you can use you thirty percent, okay. fifty percent of that meeting for organizing work and fifty percent for design and planning and presentations. Right. If if you think that makes sense. Right. So. Um, no, that yeah, does, that does, because the reason why this is important is because we need eyes and ears of folks who have, uh, who have that kind of competency on nephew, because some of the work items that we, we expect to handle requires actually some, some of the core changes. So we don't want to do it, uh, you know, in an isolated manner. So that's, that's why the question, but yeah, uh, so that, that, that makes sense. You know, where you mentioned apart from the execution, some sort of design discussions and since this this particular group will will have a mass which might be able to contribute to those discussions. So yeah, that would definitely help. Exactly. Yeah, I think it's very exciting. And, and you know, design is involved in all of these. You know, every single team here has open design questions. Right. right? Okay. You, you sometimes you, you have to figure them out, I believe, not only on paper and in Google Docs, but also yeah. in actual code execution. So it's, it's a right. very critical part of our of our process as a whole. Uh, this is not yeah. isolated work by any means, yeah. Got it, thank uh, you. Is there anyone else willing to take up the sub-lead uh, role here? I mean, I would just like to call out. Yeah. Well, yeah, and you know, sub-leads can yeah. come over time. Some people who might not be confident to put their name in right now, you know, uh, in a month or two as they work, they, they might feel confident and and yeah, and the, leadership role. Yeah, absolutely. Tal, I really. Uh, and the other thing is, like, I really like uh, Vicky stepping up uh, here. Uh, I mean, as a sub lead, it's also a great chance for any of you to, you know, uh, shadow the lead, learn on the subject on the go, uh, and be uh, be uh, be some kind of an expert in the field. It's also an opportunity, like, uh, especially in the sub lead role. Uh, even if you do not understand the scope very well, understand the issues. It's an opportunity to learn from the team, from the lead. So I think uh, that way I would encourage uh, the community to step up. Yeah, this is you know the key. The key to all our understanding, I think, of what these are. It is a leadership role. So um, this is a way to uh, to train your leadership skills, which are important for all of us in our career progress. Right, so you, you can make some sort of claim that you've you've learned something and participated in a leadership position, even if you haven't done so before. So, uh, I, I think it's a great place to do that. And 
you know, we, we don't talk about it a lot in the Nephew community, but part of what the project does is a mentorship. It's just embedded in everything we do. We have a lot of people who might not have a lot of experience with open source or open source communities. And there's a role to, there's an opportunity here to, to learn that and learn how to uh, lead in this kind of uh, very complex environment of <laughs> open source. So um, yeah, that, you know, it's a very low, uh, low risk uh, <laughs> opportunity to do so, I think, so. Yeah, um, absolutely. and especially for the newcomers, it's even, it's even better. Yeah, so I think we're nice. I think we, we don't uh, bite people off, bite people's head off if they make mistakes. <laughs> At least we haven't so far. Um, Hey, hey, Tal, um, Timo here. Can you hear me? Yeah, hi, Timo. Oh, hey. So um, I was just thinking about this documentation part. Um, maybe you can put my name there. I will sort it out with Gergari. One or the other will be there. So okay. Thank make you so it much. a little bit easier. Cool, thank you. Thank you, Timo. Thank you. Yeah, I think I've already, Tim, I saw some comments you made on the pull request and documentation, if I'm not wrong, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Wonderful. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm actually uh, pleasantly surprised. I, I was fearing a little bit that we would have challenge finding people step up, step up. But I guess when push comes to shove, people step up. <laughs> so excellent. Yeah. Um, Again, for the, any sub-lead roles here, like Tal said, uh, please, please volunteer. And then it's, it's an easier thing. Like, uh, it's a very friendly community. Yeah, I, I will say I'll make a special request for maybe a sub-lead for Alexi. I feel like that's going to be a very, uh, that will be one of the biggest uh, jobs here. And Alexi is already very busy with SIG1, as I <laughs> pointed out. I if if somebody would like to assist Alexei in that work. Yeah, I, I think the <clears throat> Oran uh, channel to, yeah, to get you someone. You mentioned Tim and, as um, well. Yeah. And I'll try so to stay, work uh, with- Alexei, I can uh, I'll assist this. you until you find a sublet. If you feel comfortable working with me. Oh. Of course, I was going to say, I'm going to work with maybe Bala and Vish as well. So <laughs> I don't want to put the two on the spot though. Yeah, I mean, it's necessary that, you know, some of us have been on this for a long time, uh, on this project since its inception. Uh, but I see this as like allowing us creating work for others to be able to deliver on what we define. That's how I yeah. see some of the team lead roles uh, and not necessarily us uh, delivering on everything. So, But, but ultimately, I want uh, two different organizations, right? That would be ideal. So. But but Vish, uh, thank you. That will definitely help. And so Tal, I'm I'm working on trying to identify who who would join the all run board. Well, Vish, I expect you just to contribute anyway. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm I'm just kidding. I know you. Will. Um, okay. Uh, and any general comments or others about the whole uh, team we've assembled here, the leadership team? Um, maybe, maybe don't yeah. call it that. <laughs> yeah, well, we're all leaders, right? You know, when 50% of the community is leaders, uh, yeah, but it's okay, we are uh industry leaders, right? Um, I, I wonder if the next step here would be to really collaboratively for all the teams. Just, I, I know, Bala, you've set up labels and everything, do we have links to all the boards that they could use? And of course, every team can modify the board and, yeah. you know, add, add, remove labels as whatever is comfortable for them. But I'm going uh, to paste, uh, if you click on this link uh, at all, probably you can see the sub boards as well. Uh, if you just click on that particular link I provided. Then if you see there is sub boards, oh. that, that is one with all issues in the platform and security documentation test. Okay. Um, could you possibly organize it more? I, I think it's just renaming to fit in our, what we did in the document with the names as well. 
Yes, we can do that. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, is, and that is it not uh, okay? So except they say, except the SDK, I think the rest should match. I think right. I yeah, possibly. Oran. Yeah, I think I think uh, service assurance. Well, there's the CIC test infra would be CICD. Yeah. Okay. Do we have a? Yeah, I think actually. Anyway, yeah, we we can we can go over and verify. But yeah, okay. So we have links to boards. You know what? Should I just link that here? Let me. I'm going to do that. Um, yeah, if you link to the main board, that's good enough because the rest of them are the tabs. So. Right. Um, oops. You know, I'll, I'll do that. Uh, I, won't, I won't waste our time doing that together. I'll do that after the meeting. But here's just the first one. So we'll have links here for everything. And we'll probably put this. You know what? I'm going to even go a step further and promote this. its own section. How's that? All right, so at the top of our document here, we'll have uh, Teams. So that'll also be a place where people can quickly jump in and look to see what's going on in SIG2. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So the next item I had, any any more comments about all this? Questions, concerns? So where does Porch sit? Porch is in platform? Yes. Okay, cool. Thanks. <clears throat> yeah, I guess we should probably uh, set up some meetings. Maybe some of the some of the groups can use existing meetings. Or, yeah, we we'll probably have a board. Yeah, yeah. We'll, 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 make sure, we'll make sure there are Slack channels. I'll try to rename existing channels that might have topic on that to team. So hopefully there'll be like, a, I'll make sure there are Slack channels prefixed with team for all of these, right? So thanks, everybody, thanks, yeah. Um, Okay, um, so related to the issue of porch, I wanted us to discuss together kind of a big thing looming over our upcoming work. We have a whole bunch of new work, but we also have a whole bunch of technical debt, right? Uh, ever since porch moved to us, we are in charge of porch bugs and there's quite a lot. Liam uh, did some work of in moving uh, bugs that existed in the CNCF repositories to ours. Uh, I think there's still some issues that were moving, moving them. Uh, Liam, I saw your uh, message. I'll we. Yeah, it's whenever. Yeah. yeah, but also <laughs> just on that list, I had a very quick browser. We probably need to do a triage too as well because. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, I mean, there's, 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 like there's, there's very serious things in this kind of minor suggestions. So. Yeah. Right. I I imagine that before we even tackle this, we'll need to do a triage because there might be a lot of junk there or things that have already been solved or irrelevant. Uh, and we need to understand kind of uh, what the, the big issues are, right? You know, this is, again, exactly, what yeah. the team lead, leads are all about doing, right? And even before that, that I think that the, the objective of what I was doing was just to get everything into the same place, into the nephew up issues. Yeah. So, this is, this, so, uh, this. And also, I think there's, there's, the, the, there's even some issues I've heard of on, with Porch that people haven't, we don't even have issues at all. For, so uh, I would... Right. Ask ask people if you have come across things like put them in anywhere, and we can uh, put, raise issues on them, um, even if you think it's trivial. And we can, you know, if if we don't know about them, we can't fix them. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you, you know, I wonder. I'm I'm thinking out loud here, and people, please jump in with your thoughts. Maybe this whole idea of balancing will just emerge from the actual work. You know, there'll be a limited number of people working on this. And, um, you know, for some people, it's exciting to work on kind of core engine stuff. For other people, 
it's boring. They'd rather work on the actual uh, use cases and issues, right? And actually the real world stuff. So um, we'll see how many people we have in our team, Liam. <laughs> Um, and that might define just our ability to move forward with addressing it, right? Exactly. Um, so, yeah, you know, I'm thinking twice here. Maybe, maybe it's not so much a decision we need to make, but rather just the reality. Still, um, I would like to open this up to, to think about it in terms of Yeah, I, that's. I think I, I before before the, the the holiday break there. Um, I I I, Josh had done something in an issue. I don't know. Did 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 you see that? Um, I just posted it in the chat here. Oh, let me open it. Yeah, I didn't post it yet. Give me a second here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the the issue of performance, right? So. Yeah, it was this um, one here. Oh. Are you sure it's in the chat? Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just put it in when I was talk when you were talking there, Scott. Yeah. So. Um, this yeah, is just a kind of a, a, a one hour. This is just a one hour brain dump of mine, but uh, I mean. Yeah. Uh, this is kind of our master issue, <laughs> right? If not an epic. Um, yeah, it's. Um, I mean, this is more about. What are we going to do moving forward, which I think is an issue, a design issue that we discuss as a whole community, right? Um, we don't, that, that's a discussion, right? And what I try to say is, and people can disagree with me, that it's not urgent. We don't have to decide about the future of Porch right now, but we do know that Porch already has a future for R3. <laughs> so, um, and there are some big standing issues there that we absolutely need to fix for, for R3. <laughs> Right. Exactly. So they we like the first two headings there. The identification consolidation is uh, is is aimed at it was but, but the thought there was that the push triage would be then uh, identified. You know, um, the what we need to fix now, and then some sort of consolidation. You know that we maybe can get to a stage where we have it stable. And then we can start thinking about architectural evolution, but this isn't addressed really to architectural evolution. You know, we know that this, but it, um, this is more like you stay alive until that comes. Right, you know, we had a few presentations about that, right? You know, uh, Wim gave us, a, I think, a very agreeable uh, uh, redesign of the basic concepts of porch, right? To, to kind of simplify them, but also make them more decoupled. Uh, you know, I presented a more radical shift in approach. Um, so, but those are, those are big questions too. And the whole question of ownership, you know, is this the right team to do that? Do we want to own that component inside the NFIO community? Until now we didn't, right? It was part of CNCF. It was promoted by Google and we could have, we worked with that a lot and there was kind of a good healthy back and forth. <laughs> But uh, now we own it completely. And that's kind of uh, an open question for us if we, if we want to do that and keep it. Um, but as I said, I don't feel like it's an, an emergency. I feel like that's something that we can discuss maybe more calmly after R3 is released. <laughs> uh, so, but, but, but I think that will kind of guide our, um, our thinking about um, you know, the balance issue that I raised. Um, since we don't know its future, we'll probably stick to fixing the most important stuff rather than, you know, evolving it in sophisticated ways. Uh, Bala, go ahead. Yeah, I think you shared some of my thoughts already, Tal. Uh, and then uh, on, on Porch, but in, in general, the, the, the technical depth, uh, which was an example, right? So, uh, but other things, they actually, we can either call it a feature or the technical depth. It, is, it depends on how you want to look at it. Uh, so making it work on a real cluster is definitely our topmost clarity in the R3, either 
we can view it as a feature or technical debt doesn't matter, but definitely you need to make it work on the real cluster. The second thing that I can think of is the whole performance thing. I think that's uh, Liam pointed that out in Porch, where the approval controller is taking so long the end-to-end -end deployment as if it looks nothing is going on. So if you see, that was one of the main pain points when we did the R2 release. Yeah. And then uh, probably uh, that is uh, uh, that is that is that is that is one of the important things. And the two more things in my list, wish list, I think it's I think it's uh, Liam. I think you were the one, I guess. Uh, if you're not, probably I might have forgetting who did it. Our tight coupling with Gitia has been uh, done away with, but we wanted to support something like GitLab just to show some other Git repo integration which we couldn't do in R2, probably we wanted to, probably that's one of the items that we want to do in uh, R3 uh, in terms of the, just to show how platform agnostic, the 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 Git, agno, Git platform agnostic we are. That's one thing. The other thing is obviously the, in, instead of the configuring itself, in our, all of our architecture diagrams, if you see configuring is something, it, which is a fact. I mean, this argument convexing is just a uh, uh, just a component that can be replaced. But the fact is today we cannot replace it because there are some some of the constructs that we use in convexing, such as local config, etc., that should not propagate to the API server of a distant destination cluster. But in order for it to show that, probably we need to support something like Argo CD. Uh, I think, in my view, if you ask me. These are the four important technical depth or new features that we need to do in addition to some of the things that we planned because we had to make we had to move the platform forward and uh, make yeah. it, uh, make it the way that we always wanted it to be. Can you can you summarize those four points again for me? Uh, the uh, push bug you already fixed uh, the the performance issue you, performance issue with the approval controller that's one thing. Uh, Uh, yeah. You mentioned the uh, Argo CD support. It's a, in addition to config sync. Oh, uh, for, okay. Not for CD. Okay, specifically. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is this a technical debt issue specifically, or it's a new feature? I feel, but this one is a new feature. That's why I said it's depending on how we look at it. I thought you wanted to. Uh, yeah. And then the making, uh, making Nephew work on the real cluster environment. Yeah. Yeah, the oh, another yeah. new feature that we discussed is the GitLab support. By the way, I uh, a while ago I posted on Slack. Uh, I've, been, I've been using this uh, Git server called uh, SoftServe, and really loving it. It is so much more straightforward than Gitty to work with. It's written in Go, so easy to dive into the code there and look as well. And uh, one feature I really loved, it has a TUI, which I always love, <laughs> instead of having to deal with the web and opening ports and stuff like that. Um, so you can really access everything through the terminal. And not only that, it, its whole user authentication is based on SSH. So you SSH into it. And um, so whatever your user is, that's those are the internal users too. So I found it really refreshing to work with SoftServe. And you know, people said G Gitty works for us, so why why change it for anything else? But if the people want to take a look at SoftServe, then you know, I've I've had great success working with it. So uh, I used to love Gitty, and now I love Soft SoftServe more. <laughs> so um, take a look if you're interested. Um, so uh, just just one question regarding Israel environment. Uh, is also uh, or Paladin, are you also thinking about like deploying? Clusters outside of uh, kind, for example. Like, yes, yes, we are real or... clusters. Yeah, yes, that's exactly it, right? Yes, actually, deploying on a real cluster uh, vector 
management is a real cluster and then workload is also a real cluster. I think that will surface. I think we have seen Alexis can talk to this better. Alexis and Sagar knows this better. It will it will surface certain networking issues and other things that we, we that we may need to solve. Uh, I think that that is needed at this point of time because people will start asking, is it running in a real environment because it's R3. Okay. So, you know, we, we put on, on the last meeting, we talked about uh, begging the TSC for access. I mean, we, we can raise this even more and, and say that this is becoming a blocker for us, you know, for the TSC members. Uh, Sana mentioned, you know, um, companies are being asked to invest more in Nephio <laughs> with resources. Uh, helping Nephio doesn't necessarily mean sending engineers. You know, a, a company who maybe doesn't have in, engineers to spare can still send, uh, give us lab access, right? Devote lab access for, uh, for Nephio to work. So. I think, uh, do we still have Saga on the call? Saga, are you there? Okay. Just to let you know, I will let him speak tall, but we may, Sagar may help us in some of these things here in the OAI lab. Yeah, he mentioned something. Uh, yes, you had your hand up? Yeah, yeah. SOP, sir. So Gitty and GitHub are almost identical, right? So easy to uh, accept that Gitty can be installed locally. So his SOP, sir, and uh, GitHub APIs, are they very similar? I mean, can you use the same APIs with SOP, sir? I don't think Gitty supports GitHub APIs. I thought early on that is probably one of the reasons why we picked Gitty. Uh, it's interchangeably, it can be used. Okay. I Not that I know of. I mean, the, the GUI might remind you a little bit, but I don't think there's any specific compatibility between Git, Gitty and GitHub. Yeah, initially, at least when I looked at it, some of the API seems to be very similar. Uh, you know, you can actually, if you wanted to use some sort of a, uh, if you use the APIs to go off and create a repository, retrieve and all this stuff, I thought those was very oh, early uh, on, like last year, so maybe. Yeah, I think it's modeled uh, in kind of a RESTful API, if I remember correctly, with Gitty. Not that it matters, you always use the client. Uh, the nice thing about SoftServe, it's all just commands. So you SSH to it, and just execute the command. So there's no, the, the only interaction is SSH, which you need anyway, because you're uh, using Git. So it's, uh, I, I just found software really refreshingly minimalistic and straightforward um, and very scalable as well. You know, you can do everything you do with Git T there. Anyway, that was, sorry, that was a bit of a distraction, but if you're interested in the topic, uh, give SoftServe uh, a try. I think you'd really like it. Um, Thanks. Okay, yeah, anyway, yeah, totally not critical. Gitty does the work for us. I just find setting up Gitty is always a pain, you know, with the initial empty repositories and users. Um, you know, that part of our script is kind of cumbersome. So I feel like if we can simplify that with something else, great, but if we already have something that works, you know, yeah, very low priority. GitLab is probably more interesting to people because GitLab is something that could, actually be used in production environments, possibly. <laughs> uh, but, and Gitty, probably not. Um, anyway. Um, so, oh, Fikra, go ahead. Just very quickly, I think I, I did a small pack on using Argo. I think that's kind of been covered, but I, I didn't I didn't wrap it up in a, in a bow, really. But uh, I'm pretty sure somebody else on Slack tried it and it worked, so. Well, that 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 pack can turn into a real uh, feature for. Well, I think I, I think I may have pushed the package to the catalog repo. I just have a package for for Argo, um, but it was it was with in, in addition to config sync, not not as a replacement. Um, yeah, right. yeah, I, yeah. Fiatra, I remember you doing something, but I was not sure whether it's uh, yeah. If it is something you need to push, please push. <laughs> I will. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I would say that for Argo to be a first-class citizen, uh, you know, we need not just support, but use cases and testing that actually can replace Configsync with Argo. And I'm absolutely sure it's not going to be trivial. <laughs> it's like completely different packaging, right, for uh, 
for Argo versus Config Sync with directory structure and you know with Config Sync support we explicitly put in the uh, uh, what are the GBKs call a uh, root repository and yeah so with Argo we'd obviously have to do other things right yeah I I, te I tested it with with Helm so so you know Argo 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 targeting Helm packages so yeah but i can i can i can keep abreast of that and then push the argo package to catalog and um, just to yep yeah. okay thank you D did you demo this fikra i don't remember seeing it i did not i i got pulled onto something else or i i i yeah, I moved on. But no, a I, long I, time ago, I remember something. We we one. had some. There was maybe I did, but yeah, there was some. There was someone on Slack did query it, and I posted on my uh, what I had, and I'm pretty sure he ran it through. They they ran it through and, and seemed to be successful. So I'll I'll double check. I'll, I'll catch up on that, Bala. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Alexi, please go ahead. Uh, yes, to clarify. Um... Fiacra, is that Argo supporting KPT? Is that the goal? Like creating a config management plugin in Argo that supports KPT? Is that what you did or you did something else? No. So I just I deployed a a, a minimal Argo CD uh, package, if you like, or just you know a KRM deployment of Argo. Oh, it's just deploying um, Argo. Okay. Deploying uh, Argo. It's deploying and, 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 Argo. Yeah, sorry, deploying Argo. Ah. Um on, on, All right. on the workload cluster, if I'm correct. Um and and using it there as a uh, you know to uh, as a as a helm engine as a helm deploy engine. Yeah, no, got it. Yeah. Okay, so I yeah, done yeah. something else. I'm gonna put it in the chat. So you did actually. Yeah, I was looking at that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and yeah. But I'm gonna talk briefly about it just so people understand. Uh, what I did is Argo doesn't know KPT. Argo knows about. Well, sorry, I'm hijacking your call, Tal. I don't know if I should do it now. No, I, I, that's fine. This is the purpose. That's the agenda. Okay, okay cool. Yeah, Argo does, does know about Helm. It does know about Customize. It does know about Kubernetes Manifest. It doesn't know about KPT. So one of the way Argo CD has to know about other things is through what they called a, config, a configuration management plugin, a CMP. And so there has been some... Uh, things done upstream about KPD support for Argo. I just um, forked it and adapted to Nephew. Ultimately, the way it looks like is sucking in, oh, well, if you go in the Docker file, then uh, uh, it's gonna be easier for me to talk about what I mean. All I'm doing ultimately is sucking in all the KPD functions here as a local binary and and Argo and, and KPT is actually able to execute the pipeline using binaries instead of containers, right? That's the way KPT work. And so I created that container with all the KPT function I needed. And then if you go just uh, one, one way back, Argo executes the generate.sh. So whenever there is a KPT package, Argo generates, uh, run that script, to generate the um, the well the KPD the the hydrated KPD package, and that's uh, what is leveraging the binaries instead of the uh, container. And so okay. then all of a sudden Argo is able to render a KPD package. Got and so, it. And, and, and so that's working. That's how I'm deploying today Nephew onto OpenShift, for instance, for Red Hat. Okay, very interesting. You know, I. So this is basically a runner, a kept runner for Argo, that it can run. Yeah, yeah. So much. I, I actually, in, in my TKO POC, I was I did manage to run kept fully uh, using Docker on Docker, right? So I have a runner there, which is very, very straightforward. It just uses kept execute. So it, it's, you know, here, let me show you. <laughs> if we're doing show and tell. Let's see. Yeah, um, here the bad thing is I need to pull in all the KPD functions themselves, which is ugly. Exactly, right? That that So that limits you because you have to package it with the functions that you want. But um, the runner is actually, uh, um, th this is the whole thing, right? So it, it actually, it, it 
there's another container with DND, D, 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 I, N, D, Docker in Docker, DIND, right? So uh, when you deploy it, it's a pod with two containers, one of which is this, and the other is the, uh, um, the Docker DIND. But you can see this whole container is just like, it just does a, a, a wait for infinity just to keep this container up because the container is designed just to run execute commands in it from other containers. But it can actually run full Docker commands. And in fact, it even runs entire kind clusters on Docker. So it's kind inside kind. Uh, I'll show you the Kubernetes asset for it. Um, so yeah, the first container in the pod is what I just showed you. So it's just the one that waits forever. But you can see it's Docker host environment var variable is the other container. So the other container actually exposes do the Docker daemon on that port. So anything you run in this first container is actually executing in the Docker container, which is dimmed, Docker and Docker. And that way, kept commands can work totally fully. So you can use, you can pull any image in, right? Um, there are tricky aspects to doing Docker and Docker, and it's probably not a good idea for production environments at all. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, this is the challenge of using kept functions that they they do rely on container images. So um, anyway, yeah, here's an approach where by which you can run any kept function without having to package it in advance and even run kind because kind also relies on Docker, right, in this case. So I have entire uh, uh, workload clusters running on this. <laughs> it's really funny, but it works. Anyway, we're, we're out of time. Uh, Abba, do you want to say something more? Yeah, I my original intention was to, when I say Argo, I'm um, obviously we're talking different use cases here. Uh, another thing is replacing Argo as complexing, not replacing, right. supporting supporting Argo in addition to configuring in workload cluster so that we can do GitOps. Uh, so that what that I think probably uh, uh, Fiat, I don't know whether that's uh, that's what you achieved. So uh, essentially it should work uh, other than this local config uh, semantics of uh, configuring. Uh, if it is something is annotated with the local config, it will not pull to the uh, API server. I think we need to do something yeah. there on that one. So, uh, so I think that's what I meant. My first goal was to make sure that config sync is uh, sorry, Argo is supported in addition to config sync as workload system, workload cluster as a GitOps tool. And right. Then, I yeah. think Alex, yeah, what you're doing has more to do with porch than uh, config sync, right? Uh, maybe. It's it's kept support. Yeah, well, I think uh, yeah, but I got in in, ter in terms. Of, but I think even there is a ticket for config sync. Config sync is is being used incorrectly, if I'm not wrong, um, in, in the way that's using root sync and repo sync. So even even that has technical death in it in itself. Just to be aware, um, if, I, if I'm not wrong, John John did leave a leave a breadcrumb for us. Yeah, there there, there are issues there. <clears throat> you know, porch. Porch and config sync both use Git repositories, but they are very different in how they uh, use them. So things don't always match up perfectly. Um, yeah. Um, and and the question is, you know, if we are switching to Argo as a replacement for config sync, we're not talking about replacement for Porch. Then uh, Argo has a completely different way of using Git repositories for deployment than config sync. So, so that's what I meant, Fikra, when you when you were talking about um, adding confixing. Well, we have to repackage things in Nefio, you know, new deployment packages that work with Argo instead of confixing. Because, <coughs> right? Is it is it really the case? Tall uh, doesn't doesn't it just? Yeah, because our packages have config sync objects in them. They have the root sync and the repository sync, which are fine tuned for confixing. Right, so if we want to switch to something else, we have to work with whatever interface that has. It's not right once run everywhere, right? It's not a plug and play, remove config sync, put Argo and could just work. Unless we add a 
adapter for Argo that it can read config sync uh, resources. <laughs> and work yeah, I that. think, uh, yeah, whatever the, whatever that is, at least in the R3 support, if you can make that work in, in a walk crawl, crawl, walk run manner, some way you can start with, like you said, the, the pre-step. Yeah. Well, that, the, it, that's a huge topic for, for its own meanings, right? Uh, exactly. Yeah. You know, on the one hand, we're looking for replacing porch, and the other hand, we're looking for replacing good fixing. No, not <laughs> to, replacing. To, just, just want to make addition. sure. I, yeah, I yeah, didn't having, mean having, to say replace good fixing. Addition to other no, addition to, tools. Right. Yes, we wrote in addition to right, yes. right. But I, I mean, like in in runtime, being able to replace, not replace and right, parse right, yeah. forth. Yeah. Um, okay, everyone, we're we're out of time. Uh, we we finished with some big topics, but I'm very happy about what we've decided today. And um, if it's okay with everybody, I'll kind of uh, share this list here with the different SIGs so people will have a sense of who's working on what. And um, with the idea that this could evolve and change. So uh, thank you for the commitment and stepping up. And I hope that my goal, I think for next week's meeting, and I hope everybody here will agree to actually start the, the proper work. So team leads, uh, if you're ready to start working ahead and, and start reaching out to people who you know will be working with you, uh, you have your boards. I'm gonna put links to the board and I'll create the Slack channels, make sure that they're aligned and we can go ahead and uh, start working. <laughs> How's that? So, so on the Slack channels, uh, uh, probably the Slack channels may already be there. Let's reuse them at all. Yeah, I'll, I'll reuse and rename maybe channels that some yeah. channels are called discuss and we can move them to team channels. Yeah, I think it's too many. Uh, we already have too many. Yeah. yeah, we have too many. Absolutely. I'm, I'm trying to consolidate and not add more. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Okay. Thanks, Thanks so much. Have a good Bye -bye. day. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.